Hi, everyone. We're back. I'm so sad to end the previous session. Um, a lot of really, really good stuff and a lot to unpack in there. But luckily, we've got yet another impressive female um, in our midst. We are going to hear from Alejandra Tamayo, who's the inbound sales manager at one of our partner agencies, Hint. Uh, and she's going to talk a little bit about how and why conversations are important um, when building relationship with customers. Tamayo, thank you so much for joining us. The floor is yours. Thank you so much. Well, first of all, hello everyone from sunny Mexico. Here right now it's just barely afternoon. So um, I just want to start by saying I'm really grateful for the opportunity of being here. But I got to admit, Typhoon did play me dirty because after all those speakers, Man, am I nervous. But okay, just bear with me for the next 20 minutes or so, and hopefully you'll enjoy this as much as I do. So I'm going to start sharing my screen now. So give me a moment here. There it is. Okay, so um, starting. For all of you who don't know me, and I mean it's basically all of you except for my mom, my boyfriend, <laughs> who registered to see me here. My name is Alejandra Tamayo and I work at an agency called Hint. We are located in Mexico and we are proud type of partners. I manage the inbound sales department where we offer services for sales enablement and of course conversations. My amazing team and I have invested thousands of hours into designing and building CRMs and chatbots for many different companies, mostly in real estate, education, and software industries. But you know, enough about me. And let's begin. So, what is a conversation? Well, the Merriam-Webster Dictionary defines a conversation by... Just kidding! No, I'm not going to give that kind of a conference. I'm a nerd. Not that kind of a nerd. I mean, nerd that loves to know new facts. So let's talk about facts. 42% of customers prefer live chat over email or social media. Why? Mainly because of the time response. It's quicker and it's easier to get a response while live chatting with someone. And using social, social selling tools can increase the win rate in a deal size by 5% and 35% respectively. Because building a report and having an online presence make people trust you and buy from you with confidence. 41.2% of salespeople said their phones is the most effective sales tool. Because at the touch of their fingertips, they can text, they can call, they can email, and have many other ways to communicate with their clients and prospects. ICMI found that website visitors that engage with your company via live chat are worth 4.5 times more. And this is because a good conversation during a live chat, giving the trust in your brand and they are more qualified given that they have received more information about you and your products or services. The Boomerang team found messages written at a third grade reading level are 36% more likely to get a reply. And of course, less is more. Simple communication that can be understood by your audience can go further than hard, complicated words that you just use to sound more interesting. So, who works at customer service? And if you let me know in the chat, who here works at customer service? I'm gonna give you a minute there. And yes, everyone. If you think about this for a minute, it doesn't matter if you're in marketing, sales, the actual customer service department, or if you're just a designer. Everyone works for the customer and everyone brings a service to them. So when you visit a website, they are not thinking about, oh, this was made by a developer and the website team, and this has nothing to do with sales. Of course not. Prospects and customers don't see lines between the communication or the services that a brand provides. They see everything as a whole. So who you are as a brand is experienced at every point of the buyer's journey. So, when it comes to talking to the customer service, we want to add to the connection that already exists. We want to create a depth of trust that builds the also-desired customer loyalty. And of course, there is this 
innate instinct of wanting to trust another human. But when a purchase is the reason of a conversation, trust is just going to leave the room. So conversations add to the depth of a connection. That's the, the whole idea behind this. So forget about the transaction and build a relationship. Why? Because in the back of our heads, we know this person is going to set anything to get us to buy from them, right? And this is because many salespeople, and I'm talking human and virtual, are only pushing us to get their products so that they can make their quotas and not because we need what they are offering. Sometimes they, they forget that their main job is to help us purchase and not to sell to us. Does that make sense? I hope you didn't get lost in translation. So all this, all this attention and the work for a sales conversation is best on their best interest and not yours. So again, this is only if the salesperson is in the group. But everything that happens during a conversation should lead to create a satisfied customer. If the conversation has false promises or out of hand expectations, when the purchase is finalized, we will end up with a very unsatisfied customer that not only is not going to buy from us again, this person is going to make sure that this does not happen to anyone else. And here is where the bad reviews start. So let me tell you a short horror story of mine. A long time ago, back when I wasn't living my best life as I am right now, I used to go to McDonald's like five times a week to get a McFlurry after school. I know, I don't do that anymore. But let me tell you, four out of five times, right after the cashier rings me for the ice cream, they will ask me, would you like a dessert to go with that? Honestly, I always knew the question would come up. So I would just let them two more seconds to think and they will be like, oh, right. And this may be a very simple example in fast food service, but that was the beginning of me noticing how people just act out of script. Many conversations don't have any soul or brain in them. All of the people that are here, how many of you have gone through this? Hey, how are you? Great, how are you? Fine, and you? Did it. That's it. If you're not listening to what a person is saying to you, that conversation is not going to end well. There is always a why, a how, a when, a where, and something else to ask. So, and this applies again to human and virtual conversations. Active listening will give you the right questions and these questions will give you the exact right answers you need. To give, it, to give all the people that they want and what they need from you. So I recently moved across the country. So I had to buy new appliances and furniture, not to sit on the floor. And all this perfect acoustic is just the echo of an empty house. <laughs> so I did my homework, right? And I researched online, I'm a millennial. So this comes as a no brainer when it comes to shopping. But before I made a final decision, I wanted to go offline and visit a couple of department stores just to compare prices and maybe get some sort of payment bill, you know, this And here comes the second part of my horror story. The first store I visited, I was shocked at how this salesperson did not ask a single question. Not one. I went there and I said I was looking for a washing machine just to check some other models, although I had already had one in mind. So he went ahead and insisted in selling me a washing machine that I knew was terrible because of all the bad reviews I've read. I mean, I know I don't look bougie, sir, but let me invest in something better. It was disappointing because he did not give any new information about anything. This is honestly one of the worst positions anyone could be. When the other person you are talking to you expects nothing from you. This is not only for sales, this happens for customer service too. When we, give, when we give answers and solutions to our customers, when they come for help or support and we give the most generic and obvious answer, this is the equivalent to have you try turning it off and on again. If we don't listen and ask the right questions, we will not give the accuracy they expect. Most likely, they have already Googled possible solutions before coming to you. And the answer you are giving, they already know that. So please be mindful and make sure to ask the right questions. So the best way to do that is to own the conversation. 
Always create a space of empathy and support. Our customers are our friends. Listen to them. Ask them questions that are relevant to what they are telling you. Do not assume. That's the name of the game. If a person may be, I don't know, the hundred person that you help with the same obvious reason for you, but for your customer, this is a brand new problem that they want and need your help. This is your time to shine. And of course, the foundation, the foundation to all great friendships is a good conversation. So not because someone is your friend and you like each other, that means you will call them 10 times a day just to tell them something that matters to absolutely no one but you. Let's keep our conversations relevant, appropriate, and timely to what matters to your friends so that the next time that you call, they will answer. So, so far we're talking theory about what to do here and I have a new pointer that I want to share with you. So now what? First of all, get a chat book. Um, like we said before, live chatting is done by a human is a full-time job. So if you feel like you have heavy traffic on your website or social media, just one person won't do. So make sure you have a chatbot to help you work with this flow. Remember, many people prefer this form of communication for the time response. So having a chat to make people wait on an answer is just not the right choice. So you have to make sure all these conversations are going somewhere. What are the options for the chat? So to get information about products or services, talk to customer service, get the main topics and build branches from there. Remember asking the right questions to help get your visitor to the right answers. The more information you add, the easier it will be to have the feeling of a real conversation. Always keep in mind to ask personal questions to identify the visitor and register another form of, co of contact if necessary. And of course, sometimes the conversation will come to a point where it needs a human. And here we have two options as I see it. First, you have a real-time notification to a human to take a conversation, but of course this can only work in certain situations and times. The other option, and this is the one that I love, is to add a video ask. When the conversation uh, with a bot comes to a point of no further, add a video with a real human so that the visitor can make the question or give a comment and, and someone will reply as soon as possible. And of course, uh, the idea of having a chatbot is to sales enable it. And this is my favorite part. A chatbot is another person. Okay, it's a virtual 24 seven sales rep that can do so much more than just ask for a name, a phone number or an email. So make sure that when you build your branches, you are creating a conversation so that a visitor can, grow all, can go through all the stages of the funnel all the way up to a customer if possible. Of course, this will be limited to certain industries and certain businesses, but how far can a person go just with the help of a bot? Most of the time, they can become sales qualified leads if we ask the right questions and build the branches so that at every step we can give and get new information that will make the visitor interested and qualify simultaneously. If a purchase can be done through the bot, either as an order placement or with an integration with a payment gateway, then you, my friend, will have achieved something magnificent because you have just, in minutes, Enable the conversation that many humans cannot achieve in months. And of course, automate as much as possible. What can be done without a human? What can be done automatically to improve the customer experience? And again, let's think about our friends and how we don't want to bother them with calls, mails, or texts that have no relevance to them. What is that they need to know? What is what they have to have in order to move forward. Create a buyer journey that at each step you automate what is a recurrent activity so that the people, the humans, can focus solely on bringing a wonderful service and not all that paperwork. The next point may be obvious, but you'll be amazed at how many businesses don't have the most basic integration. Part of having a meaningful conversation is having all the information necessary available. This means not only by asking questions, but having the answers of previous questions to bring the context for further questioning. 
How annoying it is to have to explain the same thing over and over again, each time you have to talk to someone different at the same company. Remember, we see brands as a whole, and it doesn't matter if I talk to sales or customer service. You as a brand should be up to date to everything that I've said before. And if you do, that's how you set yourself apart from the competition. By having unified in a single area all the information can make the difference in the experience a customer can have with your product. This goes from forms that they fill, mailings they have received, purchases they make, tickets for support. Make sure the people that will have a direct contact with the customer have all this information available to them so that they can invest their time in having meaningful conversations and not putting customer on hold while they are looking for answers. This one is very close to my heart because training is the foundation of a great service. You may have a few naturals on your team, but with training, they can really take it to another level. Make sure you have a constant training, even if you still have the same people for over a year. Constant training can guarantee that the new information sticks and that the new habits develop, and they all become great practices for the whole team. There is no better way to know what is going on that we're not out it to check how your team is handling everyday situations. Of course, they know that the operation and what to do, but are they all doing the same? Is it possible that the same customer may talk to more than one person on your team? And if so, will this information be unified? Will they all give the same great answers? Have some of your prices, uh, offers or your overall information changed recently? Are they all aware? These are some questions to, to have while doing an audit. And of course, let's create safe spaces for everyone to practice, to make mistakes, to get positive feedback, and having role plays in different possible situations that can come up while talking to a client or a prospect. If they practice beforehand, it will be easier to have control of a stressful situation and not make bad decisions that could affect in a relationship with a customer or a possible sale. So we've been talking a lot about asking the questions and assuming, which is nothing new, but somehow this is something that not everyone takes to their daily lives. There is no better way to know someone than to ask meaningful questions and have a conversation. So thank you very much. And if you have any questions, I will answer them now. Thank you so much, Alejandra. This was very, very interesting. Um, I wanted to ask you a question. So you are the second last session of the day. And I think a lot of the attendees, have, uh, some have been here for a while. Others have just tuned in. Um, but for the ones that have been here for a while, I wanted to cover off a little bit around meaningful and ask you, um, what is meaningful? Okay, for me, is like I said before, someone something that has a brain and a soul behind it. Like I feel it's it's really easy to just go with the flow and that script, social script that we have to always ask the same questions over and over again. But asking all those questions won't be meaningful. You won't have information that makes you go, oh, wow, I did not know that. Because it's something that you pre-assume. So for me, meaningful is having your soul put into whatever you are doing at the time. Listening, a lot of paying attention. Amazing. Yes. Uh, oh, wow. We've got a question in Spanish. Uh, maybe you can help me translate, but it's, uh, I'll try my best Spanish. Okay. It's not great. I'm just going <laughs> to. Consideras que hay mucha diferencia entre las relaciones de negocios en diferentes países. What does okay. that mean? Okay. If I consider that there's a lot of difference between the relationship uh, during business between different countries. And to be honest, yes, it is. Um, I work with HubSpot, I don't know if you're familiar to it, it's a CRM software mostly. And sometimes when I'm looking at uh, articles or some blogs that they write, 
they are very focused on United States and that sort of business type. And they have like suggestions of how to handle certain situations. And I'm like, if I do this in Mexico, I will get fired immediately. And it's because different businesses, not only in countries, but different industries have very different ways of handling things. Like sometimes you can be very appropriate by being friendly with someone, but in other industries, the fact that you are friendly makes you look cheap and unprofessional. So just there's a lot of difference between the, the relationship and business. Amazing. We are almost at time. A uh, last question, which is, I think, going back to, to meaningful. Um, how do you manage the balance between automation and making every interaction meaningful? This is a great question, Amy. Um, okay, I have a, a limit when it comes to automation. The, the thing is, you can automate basically anything if you have the right software, right? So it's, 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 it's very easy. But the point is, you have to ask yourself, can a human do this better? Or can a machine do this better? So when it comes to things that are monotonous or are repetitive, like sending mailings and follow-up mails or, or that kind of activity, that can be led to a machine because that is only just going to take time away from a, a rep to type each, each mail and send it. That is it's time consuming and not that productive, honestly. And that could be done for a machine. But when it comes to, let's say, a phone call or having a, a real conversation with a person, that can only be led to a human. So the balance is always having the people focus on what they do best. So if there are salespeople in selling, talking to your customer and selling, and if you are in customer service, servicing the customers, and all that, leave it to a machine and automate it sense and I, I imagine all the automation actually also saves your customers time so they don't have to um, deal with interactions that can be dealt with fast thank you so much Alejandra this was very insightful um, we are heading into our last speaker of the day which is Tatform COO Mike Pilowski um, we will see you in just a minute so hold on tight um, we will be right back. Alejandra, thanks again. Uh, it was a pleasure. You're welcome. Thank you for having me.